All right, guys, we are back for another video here. Um, this is going to be like one of these live reaction things. Uh, we got a very interesting video about some uh, pretty terrible people in the Dokkan community. I don't know how else to say it. Um, about, I don't know, a couple of months ago, I think it was, um, someone came to me and gave me just kind of like some info about this Dokkan private server, Dokkan Entropy. Um, but that, it was, it was some info, right? But then it was me and Oni and some others. We were approached by a couple of other sources. And then we got a lot of stuff that kind of came out. So, like, I, I, I've i seen people talking, and it's like, this one dude crossed or whatever that we originally got a little bit of info from um, is not really, like, the source of all this stuff. So, it's like people trying to, I, I don't know, delegitimize him, him or anything. I mean, sure, go for it, but, like, that's not, that's not the primary source. So, it's, you're kind of just wasting your time. Uh, there's, we got a Google Doc. We have quite a long video. Um, the thing about this, too, is there's a lot of evidence. Like, this is not just hearsay and, and BS. We have uh, images, sources, uh, all types of stuff in here. Like, they, they, this is not just make-believe. It, it's, it is pretty crazy, some of the responses and stuff like that I, I've been seeing about. Um, we, and again, we do have a Google Doc here. I'm not going to go through the Google Doc too much on video because there are a lot of images in here that I definitely don't think I could show um, on YouTube. So, uh, I, you know, I'll probably just like link this in like the pinned comment or something like that. A lot of people just gleamed through the doc without looking at the video, which I make makes sense. It's an hour long. Um, but... The doc was meant to be a companion to the video. So, all right, let's um, let's go ahead and jump in here. I think audio levels should be good. Uh, I mean, yeah, yeah, not safe for work warning on the Google Doc, big time. Uh, again, it, there's really vile shit in there. It's not make believe. All right, let's start. I, I'll I can give context. Um, yeah, here's the other thing too. At the start of this, I was approached with a lot of that info, right? And I didn't really feel like I could do the best with it. Because, I mean, people know that I, I, I don't like Dokkan private servers. And a lot of people would be looking to just kind of sweep shit under the rug. Or pretend, ignore it, or something like that. Um, just because I don't like private servers. So, Oni has been kind of building up his channel, you know, kind of doing, like, these investigative videos. You know, like, I, I, I jokingly call him, like, Turkey Tom and stuff like that. So, I gave it to Oni to take care of, and then we kind of got a lot more info from there. So, all right, let's go ahead and jump in. Let's see what we're looking like here. Uh, let me know, chat, how the audio levels are looking. I mean, if you guys want to continue defending pedophiles, know that this man is in his 20s acting like a 16-year-old girl in a Discord server full of minors. Bullying an autistic kid almost to the point of suicide. He has masturbated to Lolly Hintai. Kind of looked for characters with builds similar to his younger sister. Gender swap role playing with. Wait, 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 wait! I see a comment in chat. I was, I've, I've actually been sitting here waiting for this. I gotta pop out chat for this. Hold on one sec. All right, here, here's, here's the comment I was talking about. Doesn't Truth have a bunch of private server videos? It's kind of hypocritical to say he don't like it, but use it for his own benefit. Uh, number one, I don't use it. But the biggest point here is, uh, this is not a private server attack. This is Dokkan Entropy that's the main issue, okay? That is a huge point. And I have never touched Dokkan Entropy. I've never used Dokkan Entropy. I've never been a server. I've never been involved with it whatsoever. 
trying to uh, delegitimize this self, like like this whole thing by saying I've used private servers in the past, is actually like an argument of like a fifteen year old. Like it's completely irrelevant. It's grasping at straws. It has nothing to do with what's going on here. The horrible actions of free and all these people running entropy does not change because I've used private servers made by other people in the past. It has nothing to do with anything. It is grasping at straws. It is trying their best to ignore horrible, evil behavior. We're trying to pretend this evil behavior doesn't work just so we could use Dokkan Entropy made by horrible people. This environment that is dangerous for miners, right? We're going to just try and ignore that. Like, it's ridiculous. It's absurd, right? And the, a huge point of this, we're going to get into this. A huge point is that a bunch of shit came out they kind of swept it up under the rug. Everyone, like, you know, oh, people make mistakes. You can improve. You know, you, you get a second chance. They swept it up, continued doing terrible shit. That dude, go easy. they hid him. They knew it was coming. Free tried to hide him. It happened. Free still tried to hide him. Free lied to people about leaving Entropy. It's all in here with evidence. It's crazy. It's crazy that they just try and sweep this shit up just because, no, 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 it, it, it's not that bad. Like, stop it. You're making yourself look like a fool. With a 16-year-old girl, he is 5 million percent a weirdo. He still gets your money. Token Entropy has had multiple alleged scandals throughout the year 2023 to 2024, honestly throughout its entire lifetime. And as such, I've been asked to create a video going over all of their alleged past scandals. And on top of that, new evidence has come to light, or at least it's new to me because uh, last time I made a video on Dokkan Entropy and the stuff that they did, I didn't have all of the information. So we do now, there's a lot of new evidence that I have not seen, a lot of crazy stuff. So what Oni was, was referring to, raise the volume a little bit, I gotcha. Uh, what Oni was referring to there is um, there was this whole situation with Goheezy, right? Which, again, we're going to get into in the video, but that was kind of talked about, um, which we we can get into. Volume is still a little bit low? Okay. I mean, Oni is, I think, a little quiet there. That, that should be a lot better. It should be stuff that i really want to go over with you guys today and i want to make it clear that this has been given to me by multiple different people in the community and i went through all of the evidence given to me to kind of make sure that nothing was like a bit of a reach or anything i just took some of the biggest stuff that i could possibly talk about today some of the stuff that would really grab your guys's attention and you know hopefully something comes from this video now i want to make it clear that this is not an attack on the entire dokkan community all private servers or anything like that this is really just to shed light on a specific subsection of dokkan entropy you know like their moderators their past mods future mods current moderators owners of yeah, see that that's that's a big part right here is uh, uh, they're trying to kind of like push this towards oh it's an attack on private servers no 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 this is just focusing on entropy and the nasty shit that was done by the people there that that's what we're we're focusing on this is not looking at every single private server and shit like that that's that's what we're doing. Go kind of entropy like free oddity, just Nephi, all of those people, and genuinely probably just just the entropy community as a whole if i had to say now i don't think there are a million bad people in that server but there definitely are a lot of bad apples and most of the scandals that have come from dokkan entropy are genuinely mind-blowing like i'm surprised that the community has not canceled them or like gotten rid of that server at all because there's some crazy stuff in here now alongside this video there will be a document to showcase stuff that I can't really show here on YouTube. And I'm telling you, it is graphic. Like there are some pretty bad things in that document, stuff that I feel disgusting even adding into there. Maybe, uh, maybe this on top of the document, if you guys read that as well, will be enough to convince you that Dokkan Entropy and a couple other servers actually need to go. So today's main topics of discussion will be Goheezy and his- Yeah, so uh, a lot of, 
like a lot of the stuff is in the doc in the doc, but there's a lot more evidence and stuff like that also in this video, right? Like the doc doesn't cover everything that the video has. Porn addiction and you know how his past depressive episodes have kind of made him had that uh and that porn addiction leading to him masturbating to something called wally hentai and on top of that it gets even grosser because he would find images of wally characters with builds similar to his younger sister and beat off to that as well so also keep in mind that started when he was 14 and it went all the way to 2022 so he was an adult at that time still doing it still had a connection with his sister and was doing it till the end of 2022 and uh, was found uh, still doing it past his cancellation. We've also got the fact that Free Oddity is still the owner of Dokkan. Yeah, so 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 this is a huge thing about this, right? Um, is that, so this little, this situation with Goheezy popped up, uh, I mean, that was in December, I think, of 2023. Um, again, like we, we get another reference to the whole thread that came out for Goheezy like, a lot of that stuff did come out, right? Um, but I felt like it was important for Oni to readdress a lot of this. Just to specifically point out Free. Free is the dude who runs Entropy. He's the actual owner of Entropy. Now, when all this stuff came out, Free was caught, like, hiding this guy Goheezy, right? Like, you know, he'll try and pretend and say other stuff now, but... He was trying to protect and hide Goheezy. It, eventually, it all came out. He got caught. They did a couple of kind of like show and dance things where they tried to pretend like, you know, ownership was given to someone else, even though it wasn't. Free has always been running shit uh, in the background. Um, and this kind of just is showing how he fake stepped down. He fake walked away. When in actuality, he was always still just running shit. Like, that's a huge thing. It's like, the Goheezy stuff is here to set context that, like, oh, everyone makes a mistake. Like, you know, like, Free made all these mistakes or whatever you want to say. But then he tried to cover it up, and they've continued doing grimy shit since then. Yeah, we'll take a look at what Entropy said afterwards. Entropy, which means he's still getting your money, uh, despite the fact that he hid Goheezy from the community, an actual genuine, I would call pedophile, if it if, if fits the definition enough for you guys. So yeah, like I said, free oddity. No, it's it's not D-free, it's free oddity, free oddity. Knew about Goheezy's actions months before his cancellation. I would honestly even assume a little bit before that too. Hid it from the community, didn't do anything about it, and literally only cut ties with him after he found out that he was still doing it. So we've also got the Dokkan Entropy mod team allowing miners to be among their ranks, which necessarily isn't a bad thing, but if it's any consolation, I think that the Dokkan Entropy mod team is inept at protecting miners in their community, had very inappropriate conversations with these miners, whether it was in private DMs or in a never, another Discord server. These miners feel comfortable enough around people like Just Neffy, Free Oddity, and all these other people to say slurs and like weird jokes around them. So obviously in my mind, I think that if they feel comfortable enough doing that around the mod team, something is weird with the mod team. We've also got something on somebody named Cody, who is the owner of Phoenix, another the private server we are going to be talking about his relationship with dokkan entropy and his many lies and also so this guy cody comes up quite a bit so cody is someone who's been around the community for a while and at this point he's just a pathological liar i it's we have so many instances of this guy cody just lying his ass off right like cody if you guys remember Cody is the one who said Dokkan Fest Baby was coming three years ago. It's that same Cody, right? This guy's been making a whole bunch of, like, just, like, lies for years, dude. Um, and it's like he's kind of embroiled in all this. He runs a different um, private server, Dokkan Phoenix. And it, it, it's like Cody and Free and all these guys, like, they're all working on projects together. Cody was aware of Goheezy at the time as well and tried to hide Goheezy. Like, the thing is, is a lot of these guys knew about this Goheezy shit and, and tried to hide it. So we've got some pretty crazy stuff around Cody as well. So if you're new to the community, you're probably asking yourself, what exactly is Dokkan Battle? 
and basically it is a mobile gacha game similar to things like Genshin Impact, Dragon Ball Legends, Honkai Star Rail, and games similar to that genre. And it is based off of the popular IP, Dragon Ball Z. It's one of the first ones to be based off of Dragon Ball Z's IP. The series has proven to be popular with audiences of all ages, but generally the audiences that follow the games and the show tend to be pretty young. And Dokkan Battles community really isn't any exception to that. There are are way i would say way more minors in the community than there are adults the adults typically fall under the like creator sphere um most of them are creators from what i've under um, you know what i understand and obviously there are adults just generally in the community as well just you know most of the people in the community i would say fall to be pretty young they're either young teens or they're around like, you know, 15, 14, something like that. So most gacha games have in-game currency that can be earned in-game, but it tends to be pretty sparse. And basically what it does is, you know, there's an in-game shop as well. And that also allows players to buy in-game items in those shops. Uh, th what, what this is, this is just kind of like a, a vague explanation of like Dokkan and private servers and stuff like that. Just to kind of set up for anyone who might be coming to this that's not, like, involved in the Dokkan community, right? So basically, because the stuff in-game, the stuff that you can earn in-game is so sparse compared to just buying it, it becomes enticing for players to buy stones to be able to summon on banners now banners are things that players can use their in-game currency to spend on um they could pull in some games weapons for the characters that they pull or in dokkan battles case literally just popular characters tied to the ip itself and gacha games tend to be pretty controversial because a lot of people look at it as gambling but the thing with dokkan battle and similarly to other mobile gacha games the more characters that you pull the more of the new character that you pull the stronger that character will get in your box so in dokkan battles case there's something called the potential system you pull five character five of the new character and you can 100 percent their max potential build and what that does is entice players to kind of want to summon more so that way their characters perform better they look better uh, in game and provide you know audiences with that neuron activation so here is where i want to introduce the concept of private servers dokkan battle private servers like phoenix dokkan entropy and kx all tend to be free uh, they have paid premium services that come with them and what private servers do is it allows players generally to kind of access characters at their maximum potential something that would cost hundreds of dollars normally uh for free like all of it is for free now i don't necessarily think that is the worst thing in the world it becomes a problem when the people you are advertising this stuff to are miners and the servers that you invite them into fill to the brim with pretty corrupt and i would say genuinely just just bad people and the craziest part about private servers are they weren't even public until around 2021 like most of the time only creators had access to private servers and i'm pretty sure that they were paid even then so they opened up their doors in 2021 they all became free everybody had access to private servers all around the community and it just became chaos right like the more people who had access to those servers the more weirdos that you are probably yeah th this this video is going up on youtube again i'm just i'm just letting oni get all the context out um and then we'll I'll, I'll get a lot more chatty once we're talking about the the meat here we're gonna run into and today i want to focus on specifically dokkan entropy and the people related to it So Just Nephi is basically like the guy who has gotten J Dokkan Entropy's name out into the world. Uh, he's pushed out like Entropy Now's kind of updated people on how, you know, the custom celebrations, custom units, like all that stuff. He's basically like what people would call the, the producer of Dokkan Entropy, right? Like he just kind of produces a lot of stuff that updates the community on Dokkan Entropy. Um, and he's also like apparently pretty close with free oddity the actual owner of dokkan entropy itself after the gohizi drama happened or the controversy between gohizi and free oddity and all that stuff uh apparently he had stepped up as the owner of the server he but i mean he's not it, it's free oddity you've got red hair monkey flip who is so uh a huge thing to point out right here is it, it, it's not really owner of the server 
but owner of entropy itself. That's the big thing. That's exactly what Free is. Free is the one running the show, right? Like, they'll hide behind, oh, you know, by technicality, this other random actually is the one who has server ownership of the Discord. But it, Free is the one calling the shots here. He runs it. He codes it. He makes it. It's Free. Free, it, free is the one here stepped up as the owner of the server he but i mean he's not it, it's free oddity you've got red hair monkey flip who is a creator for dokkan entropy apparently he is kind of under controversy for making racist remarks racist jokes along now uh, uh a lot of things are are put up here a lot of different people the point with this is to establish how this is just like a reoccurring pattern it's not like, okay, like Free did this bad stuff or Gohizi did this bad stuff. It's like they did bad stuff, they did bad stuff. And then we just have like 20 more names. Like it's just like a cesspool. Like people come in, they get involved with Entropy, they get involved with Free, and then they come out doing all this gross stuff, acting in these gross ways. It's just a reoccurring pattern that this whole everything surrounding entropy has just become like a dangerous environment to people. It, it really is. And all of these different things coming out, like there's way too much. There's too much evidence. You know, there's interviews with people, sources. There's a lot of stuff here. Side people like Just Neffy. He, he, he's controversial for that reason. I'm pretty sure he's been banned. Um, it is also important to mention that there was a tweet at one point from Red Hair Monkey Flip saying that he was a minor. So Zacade is another minor within the community that has sexualized other minors in the community. He was also a former creator for Dokkan Entropy, somebody who would help create custom units. He was a part of the server and he would say a lot of weird stuff about minors. Whether or not he's a minor, I still feel like it is weird that he felt comfortable enough even doing that and this so see this is exactly the point right like 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 this person zacade is a minor as well but it's just showing that like a 16 year old will join get involved with entropy and then start acting this way entropy is a danger to the minors in the community and we're talking about a, a shonen anime game a dragon ball game it's going to have a lot of 16-year-olds, 17-year-olds, 15-year-olds playing the game. And entropy is a danger to them. This was after uh, Gohizi's situation when Justin Neffy said that he was going to be taking precaution to help, you know, make the moderation team a lot better. He got rid of other moderators and still stuff like this happens. So Smudge is a moderator for the Entropy Discord server. And then he was also a creator for Dokkan Entropy itself. And he is actually kind of been scrutinized for bullying an autistic kid, apparently almost to the point of suicide. These are the type of people that we're, we're kind of talking about when it comes to Dokkan Entropy. So Free Oddity uh, has been freaking out since we kind of discussed that we had more information on Dokkan Entropy. The Truthy T got his hands on this information and it was handed down to me, uh, has been, you know, trying to figure out ways to kind of counteract this video or whatever was about to happen well he is the owner of dokkan entropy yeah so we do have a source close to free and free has been crashing out because I, I mean i you know basically let people know like yeah a bunch of info came in we're working on a video to kind of show that this stuff's going on and he's been having a little bit of a crash out since then Despite what he says or what anybody else says, he is the owner. He's still getting money to pay for the server. It, it, you're still yeah, so see, again, I I, I mean, uh, maybe some of the Dokkan Entropy people are going to try and hang up on the fact that Oni uses the word server right here. But, but it's not by technicality, oh, who actually owns the Entropy Discord server? That's not the point. Free is, is Dokkan Entropy. That is the point. Still getting your money. He's still getting money from 
your guys' pockets. Defending Goheezy, hiding Goheezy's actions from the community, lying multiple different times about the future of Dokkan Entropy. Like for instance, there was some point where kind of throwing the idea out there that Dokkan Entropy was going to be website only. There wasn't going to be a, there wasn't going to be a Discord server, which I feel like is probably the best idea they could possibly ever do. Why wouldn't you? Yeah, th there's no reason, like, Entropy should not be involved with a Discord server at all. It's just, it's a danger to people there. It's a danger to miners. It's it's crazy. Like, the, the, there should not be a community surrounding Dokkan Entropy whatsoever. You guys do that, it just actually stops you guys from having any sort of controversy to your name. They back out on that. The server still has problems even after the cancellation he is also weirdly kept on a leash by his admins zeno is one of them off the top of my head just a really weird guy he's also described himself as a coward saying you know he's hiding from basically everybody isn't really uh, the kind of guy who who knows how to face controversy like this so reality is just the owner of dokkan entropy itself so kage world was a former creator for dokkan entropy uh he basically defended a person who said yeah, you know what? I think a relationship between a 17-year-old and a 7-year-old is perfectly fine. I don't see anything wrong with that, really. And I mean, obviously, that's just wrong. He was banned after that incident, but it's still just kind of the drive home the point. Later, I'm banned. Now, again, a lot of these names that are going to pop up, this is to set the tone that all these people come in and start doing this shit. That's it. I, I don't even know that it really matters so much where any of these conversations occur in DMs, in a different Discord server, an Entropy server. Many of these people that come up are mods. These are the mods talking like this, the, the moderators of the server. It, it's just people come in contact with this community, with Free, with Dokkan Entropy, and they start wiling out crazy inappropriate shit that again is a danger to people that dokkan entropy is just filled with these kinds of people and dokkan entropy's creator free oddity is doing absolutely nothing about it because of his moderators chaining him to like a, a fence or something like that he just won't let go of this discord server we've already gone through a little bit of what goheezy has done but basically he was a former moderator for Dokkan Entropy's Discord server and a creator for Dokkan Entropy itself. You guys already know that he has masturbated to Lolly Hentai and kind of looked for characters with builds similar to his younger sister. Uh, obviously, that's messed up. He was also a little bit racist, but he was also he's just a really close friend of Freeodity. Like I said, Freeodity defended the crap out of him, hid it from the community, and I'm sure that if Goheezy wasn't exposed from an outside source, Freeodity would have been perfectly fine keeping in the community. So FOOP is a creator for Dokkan Entropy. He was pretty close with Goheezy and thought that Goheezy could change, defended Goheezy's actions, and you know, kind of honestly even like pushed the agenda that, you know, it's just a mental illness, people can change from it. He can't really be blamed for masturbating to images uh, similar to his younger sister. And it's weird to me that the community is perfectly fine with letting people like this roam around uh, in this server. I mean, I know that some of them are gone, sure. But the fact that they're there and the fact that Dokkan Entropy uh, is a breeding ground for this kind of stuff. Uh, Free is in his 20s. Fr Free is, is in his 20s. Stuff. Discord in general, really having any dis Discord where miners uh, filled within it, um, and your moderation team is so bad at doing their job that this stuff just keeps happening, and you keep inviting these people who defend these guys' actions. It's just like really weird, and I don't understand like how, how it could possibly how how it could possibly even uh, be a thing still. I want to give you guys a little bit of context to the Goheezy situation. The, all of the screenshots are going to be popped up. You guys will see what I am talking about as I talk about it. Some of these screenshots are not going to be up on here. So if you guys are interested in seeing those, go ahead and look at the document. Um, I also have like extra notes in there, but um, there are things in that document that I want you guys to read, look over and kind of see for yourselves. Like this is the type of stuff that Dokkan Entropy is doing. Goheezy was a pretty good friend of Dokkan Entropy's owner, Free Oddity. He's also friends with a lot of other private server owners from the community as well. And the reason why this drama went public in the first place was because Goheezy told Carrie, the owner of KX, to ban a user from his Discord server for apparently liking and uh, and uh, enjoying Lolly Hentai on his Twitter account. That Twitter user, or not Twitter user, that Discord user got a little bit salty 
and King to carry about uh, Goheezy basically doing the exact same thing and how he felt the ban was super unfair because of it. Now, apparently, Carrie did not know that Goheezy was doing that behind the scenes. So he asks Goheezy about it, and Goheezy basically tells him everything. Like, he admits everything. Goheezy basically says that he's been struggling with depression since he was about 14 years old, and because of that, uh, he, he sort of spiraled into this porn addiction. Apparently, something in his past when he was a child, he was like exposed to porn when he was a kid, and that kind of fucked his brain up, apparently. Um, but once he was 14, he kind of spiraled into a depressive episode that formed a porn addiction. And since then, I mean, it kind of kind of included uh it, it did include lolly hentai like it included lolly hentai and, and for some reason in his mind he thought it'd be okay to uh look at these pictures and try and find uh images of them kind of with similar builds to his younger sister it gets weirder after that goheezy goes ahead and says but you know it kind of ended at the end of 2022 and that's when he reveals that he had reformed his relationship with his younger sister um around that time so goheezy says that he stopped masturbating to lolly hentai at the end of 2022 stopped liking that stuff everything else but that's probably wrong because if you go to his telegram and by the way i just want to let you guys know that this telegram was created after goheezy was canceled publicly we see that there is an image of a little girl being touched by a grown ass man and it, it's weird it's in the document i'm not going to show it here on youtube YouTube, but it is go Heezy's telegram and yeah so th this is something we got from a source uh again it's it's in the google doc it's not something i could show on twitch it's not something i could show on youtube i i, I can't put these up uh but yeah it, it it's all there and it was after the whole thing happened um again the, it's it's very important to go over the go Heezy stuff you know, even though this already was public last year and, you know, it was kind of, I mean, it, it, I don't know, people kind of like pushed it aside so they could use their Dokkan characters on Entropy, I guess, or whatever it was. But it did like it didn't stop. This behavior kept going on in behind the scenes. Goheezy was still involved. Like all this griminess was still there, even though they pretended it wasn't. I'm not going to show you guys how I got that, but we have it. Uh, and I mean, it's just, it's, it's vile. It's actually fucking disgusting. I, I can't believe that that is something that Briotity, a bunch of other moderators and owners of different private servers defended. I just, I, I'm sorry. It's just fucking crazy to me. And the part that makes me think that all of this is just way more scummy than it ever needed to be is that Free Oddity knew about this months before it was ever drop i don't know why somebody like free oddity could yeah so see again th this is not just you know free will try and say like oh i found out about it and then i blocked them or i banned them N no 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 free knew about this way ahead of time free still knew about it afterwards while talking with him th th this stuff was not a shock at all or drop i don't know why somebody like free oddity could listen to something like that and and be like perfectly cool with it he was a re-offender time and time and time again it's not like he only did it one time and he stopped doing it afterwards because you knew it was yeah see free knows about the situation you've matured out of it now and that's what matters to me right like just it's just it's crazy it's crazy was wrong this happened since he was 14 years old to the end of 2022 he was beating off to his younger sister till the end of 2022 when he finally reformed his relationship with her and the craziest thing is he didn't even stop then he didn't even stop then it happened all the way through 2023 and i'm sure it's still happening go he's he's out there somewhere getting his fix his lolly fix i guess I'm not the type of person to want to go and cancel somebody, but I see this shit. I see that Free Oddity knew about this. He didn't tell anybody. He argued internally with hit the people who were telling him like, hey, yo, free go easy needs to go. Like this is bad. He was arguing internally with his staff, with other moderators. For some reason, this was hidden into the uh, hidden from the community for as long as it was. It took about three months for the cancellation to actually happen in which Free Oddity finally dropped them uh no idea why it took that long but it sure did so now i want to talk to you guys a little bit about the cancellation itself so on december 6 2023 a twitter user by the name of adrian made a thread 
basically going over all of the Goheezy situation. In the thread, he talks about how FLLP and Free Oddity defended Goheezy. And whenever FLLP was confronted by Goheezy with the situation, right? All FLLP had to say was, hey man, I'm super happy for you, man. I'm happy you grew out of it, right? And whenever FLLP is confronted by other people on the mod team that sort of found out about Goheezy, all FLLP had to say was, well, I mean, he's mentally ill that you can't blame him for doing what he did if he is mentally ill. I'm not, I'm, I'm not a doctor or anything, but I'm pretty sure depressive episodes don't make you want to look at Lolly Hentai, right? Maybe you cannot do that, especially if, you know, you're you're kind of searching for that stuff and 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 they're of similar builds to your younger sister i don't think that was what the press of episodes do to you maybe that's just me the initial cancellation was on december 6th go heezy started talking about you know that stuff around september even in those screenshots he says that Briotity knew so this all happened months before uh, the cancellation itself. So I have talked at length about Goheezy and his crimes because I feel like it's super important to kind of drive home to you guys that this is an actual pedophile within our community. Free Oddity hid that away from us. And he was willing to let that be the case for as long as Goheezy was never caught. Um, I feel like if that information was never public, it would have never, ever, ever came out. Um, and I feel like Free Oddity would have been completely fine not having that information out. But now that I've talked at length about Goheezy, I want to talk about Free Oddity and the stuff that he has done as well. So a couple days after the cancellation, Just Neffy pings the entire Dokkan Entropy Discord server to let them know about the future of Dokkan Entropy. In this massive paragraph, Just Neffy talks about how he didn't really know about the Goheezy situation. He felt disappointed in it. And he also talks about how Free Oddity has stepped down from the position of owner to developer of Dokkan Entropy, which changes nothing. It actually changes nothing. He still gets your money. Honestly, somebody like Free Oddity should have just been gone from the community, but because he owns the server, he's not going anywhere. Just Nuffy also brings up the fact that Free Oddity had his- Yeah, so, so see, th th this is the point. It, it, it's not really so much specifically that Free owns the Discord server, but that Free is the one- that owns entropy itself right that's what's so huge so he's calling the shots he's the boss free is the one that's actually running doke on entropy still all right let's continue or he's not going anywhere just Nuffy also brings up the fact that free oddity had his own run-in with a minor and that just Nuffy took a look at the dms and everything else like that and he didn't see anything related to grooming but i'm not here to argue that free oddity is a groomer i am here to argue that free oddity is five million percent a weirdo so around may of 2023 free oddity was gender swap role playing with a 16 year old girl and he would do this yeah so i i mean this shit is just i like bro i <laughs> like this this is the person that runs dokkan entropy this is Dokkan Entropy right here. And this person that he's talking to is in the comment section here. I, I, like, now's a good time to get to the context um, right here. Misogyny. At, like, again, they're shipping a minor with other members of the community. Like, it, it, it's crazy. Free convinced the entire server I was a complete liar and that he was fully innocent. I had to lie about my real age. I'm actually 15, but it felt like I had to be 16 to be there. Says a lot about the atmosphere. Like, this is the exact point. Entropy is a danger to the community and to the miners in the community. In his public server, as well as ask her questions like, Am I doing a good enough job for you in DMs? And the reason why he felt justified in doing this is because this girl was acting like him in his server. So I just want to let you guys know that this man is in his 20s acting like a 16 year old girl in a Discord server full of minors. Like, how could that not be weird at all, right? Like, how could that not be weird? You're also the owner of Dokkan Entropy and that Discord server. What, where did your brain go to make you think that that was possibly okay? Like, even a little bit. And it's especially weird because some of the moderators in his own circle felt weird about it right like smudge for example who is also a weirdo so i just gotta say like if the people in your discord server who are moderators for you and they're also weird like and and they're saying things like you know hey man uh this guy's a little bit of a weirdo for for role playing as a 16 year old girl 
in your own server like that's weird right like you you've got to be you're officially a weirdo at that point like in my mind if my circle is calling me a weirdo for doing something like i've done something fucking diabolical in no world should a 20 some some man in his 20s be acting like role playing with a 16 year old girl in a server full of minors like that just should not be the case minors who by the way are mostly dudes right like you're acting like a 16 year old girl in a server full of minors that are guys and in no world is that ever to be okay all that does is prove to me that you guys are really bad at doing your jobs and you can't use any sort of outside thing like you know kind of critical thought you know it's just it's just weird to me so not only did he need to apologize for acting and role-playing as a minor and with one but he also needed to apologize for defending and hiding away a pedophile from the community it wasn't until go he's was caught reoffending that free oddity actually let him go and i'm assuming that's when the telegram was made so i'm assuming he still had plans for go easy to be a part of the community and the craziest part is it doesn't even stop there because free oddity was made aware of an alt account of go easy like an actual alt from go easy and free oddity did nothing to stop it he did nothing he sat there and let somebody else handle it for him despite being made aware of it hours before the the alt account got banned right like hours before he knew that he had an alt account and he he, he did nothing about it he himself did nothing about it knowing everything that Goheezy has done. And that drives me insane. Somebody else named Brandon had to do it for him. I'm assuming that Free Oddity wasn't even the person that told him to do it. I'm, I'm, I'm sure that the person was just like, oh, this guy's a fucking pedophile. Get him out of here. I have faith in Brandon, dude. I have faith in that guy. So now I want to go over a quote uh, from the apology letter itself and point out a couple things. I was in contact with him from his confession to when I found out he was still reoffending. after which I immediately cut off all contact with him. Regarding his alt within the server, so so just re to pause real quick to give context so there was two statements made at the time uh this was in response to the thread uh by adrian uh which, which was referenced a little bit earlier um back in december of 2023 there was a statement from dokkan entropy and then there was a statement from free as well now one of the major issues is this statement does try and imply that free is out of there free step down free is gone from dokkan entropy and they're going to put it in other people's hands when that was a lie and it was deception it was deception server i learned about it from him only a few hours before brandon banned the account but the fact of the matter is i didn't ban the account when i learned that is another mistake i deeply regret and my thing is Free Oddity, you're a scumbag because you knew Goheezy had done all this stuff months before it happened. He said you guys made him feel okay with the fact that he had done it. So, I mean, when he reoffends, which I'm sure he was doing even before, you know, uh, you guys found out about the telegram or anything else like that. I mean, you guys, you guys did nothing to stop it, right? You guys did nothing to stop it until you guys were forced to by somebody else, which is what I'm learning Dokkan Entropy likes to do. They sit and they wait, do nothing about a, a, a real problem until somebody else calls them out. Overall, this apology letter means very little to me and it should mean very little to you guys as well because free oddity is still the actual owner of dokkan entropy nothing has changed with that literally just because he has a title shift means absolutely nothing he's still exactly right there that's one of the biggest points they try and hide behind the fact that oh we actually handed off the owner of the discord server to this other random like that's a big deal no it, it free is still like a sh dude he's like a puppet master a shadow boss pulling strings behind this behind the scenes it's crazy man and you guys are seeing like there's just tons of people come in contact with this vortex and then they start acting exactly like this that's why all these other kind of like you know smaller people saying weird shit and doing weird shit is so relevant and so important to it because it's everything that is coming in contact with Dokkan Entropy and with Free Oddity is becoming like this. Still the owner of Dokkan Entropy, it's still in his name. Like I said before, he's still getting your money to run the server. And I mean, he complains about having to pay for the server all the time to his own Discord server, to his friends, to like everybody. So now I wanna ask a question to the audience. Do you guys feel comfortable giving your money giving your time and giving like any sort of attention 
to somebody who has defended and hid a pedophile from the community. He is. So again, he was hiding him. That's a huge thing. Like this Goheezy stuff is relevant to bring up again to give more context than what happened, you know, that Free was doing beforehand and then also afterwards. It matters. A lot of people going, oh, they're just bringing up old stuff. No, 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 no. There is a exact reason for it. Still in the community. Just having access to 100% units and... And I, one other thing, too, is that, like, like Free is profiting off of all this. He is making money off of creating this environment, bringing in people. You know, there's a story where there's a miner who's kind of being taken advantage of to give money, which we're going to get to in a little bit, um, you know, in order to help, like, fund the server, fund costs for Free to pocket some of this money as well. You know, people use this private server. They're posting clips on, you know, YouTube and TikTok and Twitter. And then you'll get someone replying, oh, how do I use a private server, bro? And then they give them the link. They go in there. They give money to be able to use the characters, change the builds, do all this stuff. This is just a whole scummy, dirty, filthy situation. Free is scum. And it's it, we just have the whole thing right here in front of us. And free stuff really matter when people like this are hiding pedophiles from from the community in a server full of miners. Like, I just don't think that's okay. And you guys shouldn't either. So now I want to talk about Dokkan Entropy's Ma team and miners. As stated above, there have been plenty of miners in the community that have been like, you know, fostered into the moderation team or like creators for Dokkan Entropy server, but they still talk to the moderators, like the owners and stuff like that pretty regularly because they are creators for Dokkan Entropy, right? Like, I mean, the server owner and everybody else would like to have contact with the people creating stuff for their server. And normally, I don't think that'd be the biggest issue if things were handled properly, but as we have seen, Dokkan Entropy's moderation team does not handle things with miners very well. That and the miners themselves become weirdos because of it. And part of me wants to blame the adults uh, on the moderation team for that. So there are a couple miners that stand out from the crowd. And one of those miners is named Zakade. Now, as I've said before, whenever I was going through all the names, Cade was somebody who liked to sexualize other miners in the community. Miners do stuff all the time within like school and stuff like that. That doesn't really matter. But when you have a public discord server with full, full of miners, unless you have that little bio that says you're a miner in your discord profile or on your Twitter account or something else like that, normally your identity is pretty anonymous. So when somebody is in your Discord server making jokes about sexualizing minors and how all the adults should eat out minors, it becomes a little weird, right? Like it, it does become a little weird. And I feel like the only reason why somebody like Zakade would feel comfortable doing that in your public Discord server is if he feels comfortable doing it around the moderation team itself. Now that is an allegation, right? That's not proven. I can't prove that, but I feel like if somebody feels comfortable enough doing that in public, I can't imagine what he is doing behind the scenes with Dokkan Entropy's moderators and stuff like that. And I guess it's important to note that um, this happened earlier this year in 2024, uh, before, after the Goheezy situation. Zakade even mentions like how he is worse than Goheezy. And I mean, it, 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 it's, 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 it's just weird. It's just weird. All this does in your server is make people feel more comfortable making jokes about this and also brings in the wrong kind of people if they see it. All this is is like pedo bait. Your, your server is a pedo bait server. So this is actually a new name to me. I have not seen anything about this guy um, until I started researching in on Dokkan Entropy. And this person's name is Dieko. And Dieko basically has paid his way to the top of Dokkan Entropy. Yeah, so here we go. So, so, so this is going to get into that thing I was referencing earlier. All right, so let's get into this situation with them taking advantage of, I believe it's a 14-year-old that they were kind of taking money from or taking advantage of to get money. Actually, a new name to me. I have not seen anything about this guy um, until I started researching in on Dokkan Entropy. And this person's name is Dieko. And Dieko basically has paid his way to the top of Dokkan Entropy. Not really, but he has paid Dokkan Entropy a lot of money. Now, this kid is 14 years old and has given Dokkan Entropy, I would say in total about like more than a thousand dollars. Hope maybe. Um, from the messages I've seen, uh, $700 has been thrown in there. And I know some 
other server owners and people from the server have calmed him uh, for about like uh, close to a thousand dollars, right? Overall, that's a bit scummy to do, especially when your moderation team is doing nothing but hyping this kid up. And I gotta wonder why they're hyping him up, especially if they're giving him money. Like there's literally one where a moderator named Joe, who is uh, actually somebody who fought against um, who fought for Go Easy getting banned on the Discord server. But in this instance, uh, he talks about how he's, he's hyping this kid up, right? He's saying like, you know, this kid is funding our entire celebration. This kid is talking about how he should pay free oddity and stuff like that. And other people on the server are talking about how he should have paid free oddity. And nobody is saying anything against it. It's really weird. It's super, super weird to me. Cody from Phoenix has condom calmed him for a thousand dollars. All right, so here's where this name comes up for the first time, Cody. Uh, again, Cody has been around in this community for quite a while. He's run afoul of many different people in the community, um, lying about art, lying about knowing the artist Fenyo, lying about Dokkan leaks. Uh, he is a pathological liar, and he admits he's a pathological liar. Uh, like, there's plenty of screenshots and evidence of a lot of uh, Cody just uh, being, I don't know, very weird. We're about to get into it. I don't think as adult, you guys should be asking this 14 year old kid who I'm sure it isn't even his money, but maybe, maybe it is, who knows? Thousands and hundreds of dollars. I think that's ridiculous. Maybe you guys don't do it like directly, but when you're hyping him up and you're making him feel good about spending all of this money on your guys' server, there is some ulterior motive there, I think, whether you guys intend to or not. And like I said, Nothing sounds good about this because the kid is 14 years old. I just don't think that should be his responsibility. So another person in Dokkan Entropy's discourse is named Red Haired Monkey Flip. Now, Red Haired Monkey Flip has been seen making racist jokes. And normally, you know, it's not the biggest issue. The big Again, th this is more so just establishing. Like, I, I think I I've seen Dokkan Entropy trying to distance itself from certain people or try and downplay that. But it's just to continue to set up a pattern, a pattern of the behavior of people involved with Dokkan Entropy. The biggest problem I have with that is that the moderation team kind of allows them to do that within their ranks, within their servers, within their like DMs and stuff like that. And they kind of reciprocate that same energy. They'll call him racist stuff uh, and, and kind of joke around with him that way too. And all that does is make this kid feel way more comfortable with the fact that he can say that in your server uh, with no repercussions. I'm pretty sure he was banned. I am more than certain that there are more cases of this happening in Dokkan Entropy's Discord server. As it appears like the moderation team is just so inept at doing their jobs. For example, some of the moderators have like bullied an autistic kid almost to the point of wanting to kill himself. It just becomes so insane that anybody on your moderation team even gets allowed to get away with any of this but that is just what your server is i guess so now i want to talk about the recent drama and the people involved with it like i said the truth et got his hands on some information from a former moderator of dokkan entropy named cust and since it was known that the truth et got his hands on this information people yeah see okay so so this is what happened I, again, I got a, an email. I had some things sent to me, but I, like a, an attack on Cust or trying to downplay him or trying to say, oh, he's dirty and stuff like that, all of that stuff is not super relevant because it doesn't change all the stuff that's happened with Free Oddity and all these guys has happened and there's evidence of it, right? All of that stuff has happened. So trying to just say, oh, like, like downplaying it just from this guy cussed, it, 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 it's not like it, it's not really a good defense or a good argument. And also, most of the most damning things we got were from other sources anyway from the Dokkan Entropy team, like Free Oddity himself have been acting completely erratic, saying that they're going to call us out on all the hypocrisies. You know, the, the hypocrisies being the Truth DT using a private server at one point and that they're going to continue doing what they do. I mean, if you guys want to continue defending pedophiles and, you know, making racist jokes around minors and calling them racist slurs and also kind of just like having minors pay for your private servers for you, then sure. I mean, you guys can go ahead and keep doing that. I would prefer not to and hopefully the community would 
would rather that be the case too. But like I said, this information is new to me. It might not be new to Dokkan Entropy's moderation team um, because they have been actually talking about this for a little bit too. Uh, so it might not be new to them, but I'm sure it's new to you guys and it's definitely new to me. Um, so we have information on another private server owner named Cody who does have contact with uh, Dokkan Entropy's moderation team. Like, Yeah, so that's the thing. Um, Cody... It, it is is very much in bed with Free Oddity and all these guys. Cody was well aware of what was going on with Goheezy ahead of time. Um, Cody also tried to sweep it up. Cody also tried to pretend and protect Goheezy. A lot of these guys were all involved in the same circus, and they're all dirty together. Like, they talk about it all the time. Since this information has come out and Cuss has been talking about it with the Truth E.T., uh, Cody has actually been sort of sort of trying to get the Truth ET to look away from Dokkan Entropy, right? He's also said that to Dokkan Entropy's moderation team. Dude, Dokkan Entropy is going to go down for this. We can't have that. That's like unacceptable, don't you think? So, I mean, Cody. So, I, I, I'm going to just pause for a quick second. Those were my DMs that flashed up on screen. I want to take a look and perhaps I could see if there's anything else in those dms because cody very clearly began to like uh oh, oh no 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 don't look into this no 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 that guy cussed is completely you know unreliable like he's bad he's dirty like yeah, yeah don't look into this don't look into this don't look into this so it's very clear that cody was like yeah please stop all right i just took a look to see if there was uh anything else relevant in my dms to be shared but there wasn't the the, the most important one was just put on screen. So. He has been trying to kind of, sw you know, kind of deter us from looking into Dokkan Entropy. And in that action, it had me a little suspicious of Cody. So Cody Thomas Hinchley, I've got that name from a public discord. Yeah, so um, as we could see right here from it coming up. Suspicious uh, of Cody. Then... So Cody Thomas Hinchley, I've got that name from. So Cody, you know. I, I trying to make money or whatever it is. Uh, I mean, he drops his name right there in discord. And then, I mean, Oni did his due diligence and, you know, we have other sources and stuff like that. Um, a public discord server of his is somebody who has been to prison multiple times in the month of July for domestic. So, and then here we go. Uh, we have, as you guys can see in Indiana, these are public records. Um, I've already seen talk of people trying to downplay, um, talking about doxing or defamation or any of this stuff. This is public information. It's right out there. You could type his name into Google and the results will pop right up. None of this shit is hidden. None of it is, you know, it's there. I mean, again, this is kind of like the circles that are around Dokkan Entropy right here. Domestic battery and invasion of privacy. As I said before, once Cuss got into contact with the Truth ET, Cody has been acting like insane, trying to get Truth to look away from the information that Cody is giving him. Just not talk about it because Cody is a bad source. Well, I feel like it's important now to tell you guys that we've gotten this information from more than just Cuss. Like this is coming from people inside of Dokkan Entropy's team itself. Uh, so I now I, I do wanna just, just skipping ahead, there is, I mean, you know, spoiler alert, but we did add in an interview with an anonymous source, right? Discussing a lot of this info, getting a lot of info. That a, a, a sizable chunk of this video is, it, it, it's an interview with a source. Again, we, we made sure that we were coming correct here and that this info was vetted and not just make-believe bullshit. I mean, obviously, Dokkan Entropy's team wants this stuff to go as well. But yeah, like I said, Cody's been acting super strange, trying to get us to look away from Dokkan Entropy, and that made me suspicious. So I go and do my own, I do my little research, I ask around, and it turns out that Cody said his full name in the Discord server, Cody Thomas Hinchley. This is weird, because on top of this, somebody, a random person, comes into Cody's Discord server and talks a lot of shit. Right, it says a lot of bad things, like how somebody in this Discord server has traumatized me, and they also talk about... Okay, so this part is pretty important, right? I mean, I, I don't want to... 
um, get to, I, I, I don't know how to word this, but, uh, this message, I, I'm, I'm cutting it off a little bit here, but, uh, this message right here, I think we can tell exactly who this is from. Um, let's see. He's active in the server more than other to my knowledge. Um... Unaware of a pregnancy. Yeah, so, I mean, this this is the girl right here. The person, um, I believe, that is involved with the ongoing, you know, whatever, for whatever reason, he was arrested, right? Like, this is it right here. Again, there's all evidence of this stuff. It's not just, like, make-believe hit piece or something like that. There's actual documents, evidence, lots of stuff fatherhood um and how the person is a pathological liar a known pathological liar and is very popular within the community very well known within the community itself in his community and has been active around multiple other communities as well this on top of the fact that cody himself has acknowledged that he is a pathological liar he's lied about yeah and again th this is the thing this guy cody loves to talk i don't I, I, I don't know. I like Co this Cody likes to hear himself talk, see himself talk. Already this video has come out. I mean, I'm I'm recording this reaction um, you know, several hours after the video's come out. And I mean Cody has confirmed that a lot of these things are true. I, I like like Co like, you know, no attempt to even really defend himself is just like, yeah, it's true. Multiple things. His race included he has said that he is a Japanese man, and if you guys take now, and, and here's another thing. The video comes out. This is in here, um, you know, of him lying about being Japanese. I mean, you guys saw, you know. Uh, and immediately, within two seconds, Cody is on Twitter saying, I never lied about my race. He's in Discord saying, I never lied about my race. And then people are like, oh, well, there's the evidence right there. And then he deletes the tweets. He deletes the messages and says, oh, yeah, I, I'm caught. Take a look at the mug shot. He is not a Japanese man whatsoever. Uh, he, he is far from a Japanese guy. And that kind of had me connecting some dots. So somebody random comes into Cody's Cody's server to talk about how he's a pathological liar and he has caused her a lot of trauma and that she is in contact with law enforcement. And also the fact that Cody has been trying to keep some information away from our eyes to stop us from looking any deeper into Dokkan Entropy. And also the fact that, you know, he lies about having any sort of contact with Dokkan Entropy uh, in general. It just kind of made me suspicious. So you take a look at Cody Thomas Hinchley's profile, or you look him up. In the state of Indiana, you see that he has been arrested twice in the month of July for domestic battery and invasion of privacy. And this is all thanks to Dokkan Entropy, right? If they weren't talking about the mugshots, I would have never looked into it. I never would have understood what was happening. But Cody's name being mentioned in his own Discord server by himself, and then also the whole Ruby Rooster Teeth situation happening, and then also Dokkan Entropy talking about their mugshots, it all just connected to me. So I looked it up, that is what Cody is guilty for. If everybody in Dokkan Entropy defending a pedophile, hiding him away, also interacting inappropriately with minors and really just doing a shit job at protecting the minors in their community wasn't enough for you well i hope the legal system is because there it is cody has been in jail for domestic battery and uh invasion of privacy it's also funny because cody has also known about the goheezy situation he knew about it hit it away, and even defended Goheezy at the time. I'm sure he apologized for it at some point, but why would you do it in the first place? Why would you defend him in the first place? It just doesn't make any sense. Cody has lied about his race. He's lied about his involvement with Dokkan Entropy. He's lied about units coming to the community. He's lied to leakers. He's done fake leaks and stuff like that. And it just, I mean, no matter what he says, I just i just can't trust really anything that he says. The All of the trying to get truth to look away from Dokkan Entropy seriously did nothing but ring alarm bells in my head about Cody himself on top of all of our anonymous sources telling me about how he's not really a great guy so at the time of recording this new information has actually come out about all right so so th this is big this is yeah okay so um free oddity cody a lot of these people they were aware that we're making this video so it's very crystal clear that they were preparing kind of like an alternative. Like, Entropy, I, I mean, 
uh, should, uh, dude, like, entropy should be shut down after all this stuff. You see, when people come into this vortex, it's just a danger to people, it's a danger to miners, it just becomes a dangerous situation. They very clearly are trying to set up, like, a new project that's kind of like something separate from Dokkan Entropy, something separate from Dokkan Phoenix that they could kind of run off to and make, oh, like, this has nothing to do with Dokkan Entropy, which did all the bad stuff. This is something new. That's what this is. This is them knowing that the video is coming and trying to set up, like, an eject button, an escape plan. That's exactly what this segment is. Dokkan Entropy and Dokkan Phoenix specifically. So Dokkan Phoenix and Dokkan Entropy have banded together to make a new project called Project Sparking. So real quick, I am going to read to you guys what Project Sparking is exactly. In their little announcement image, it says, hello everyone, Project Sparking is our new team for a group of artists and creative minds to deliver quality Dokkan mods to private servers. We don't affiliate with Dokkan, but have a passion for creation and making amazing content for you all to enjoy. We hope you stay tuned. For our first project release, we plan to announce more details this Friday, as well as the official release date. Things are about to get ultra. We have plenty of other mods and celebrations in store. You can check them out in our new trailer as well. So like I said, Project Sparking is a collaboration between Dokkan Entropy and Dokkan Phoenix and a lot of other smaller creators within that circle as well. And if we take a look at the accounts that Project so here we have a lot of the people who are involved in it. Sparking is following. We can see just this is the big one. This is free oddity right here. This is free. That's him. A as long as free is involved, you know, it's dirty. Sneffy, Cody, who is the owner of Phoenix. And then, then there's Cody right there as well. And also, Nimgen's Nightmare, which basically is, it's literally just Free Oddity under a new name. Now, I've already talked about everything that Free Oddity and Cody have done wrong, but I find it funny that Cody says they have zero affiliation with Dokkan Entropy, and yet here... Yeah, so, so this is Cody. Cody has had many meltdowns in the past. Um, there was a huge meltdown that Cody had, I mean, using his Dokkan Phoenix account. Um, several months ago, and in there, you know, really tried to disassociate Dokkan Phoenix from Entropy, but, I mean, Cody and Free are in bed together, uh, you know, they're doing, like, all this protecting of Goheezy together, they're trying to do their next project sparking together, like, it, it, it's just, most of the statements that come from Cody is just lies just for the sake of lying. Here they are working with some of Dokkan Entropy's creators and their admins. So I just, I think that's really strange. And obviously just like if we go back, a very clear lie yet again. Now, like I said before, I think that these private servers are the scum of the earth. I think the people who run them are disgusting people and they don't really need to be in our community. And if I'm being honest, now that I know that Dokkan Entropy and Cody and, you know, Dokkan Phoenix know about this video, it makes me wonder why the hell they would create an entirely new project based around their servers. Um, it just seems just seems weird to me. Now, before we end today's video, I want to tell you guys that we actually did an interview with one of our anonymous sources. Now, I have to stress this because I feel like it's important to add, but we have more than one anonymous source. We didn't just get this information from one person we have multiple people feeding this information to us so i want to play that for you guys today but before we do that i need to stress the fact that keep in mind that free oddity said he was going to step down from dokkan entropy that hasn't happened he still owns it he still gets money from it he still pays for the server itself he still runs Dokkan Entropy and he is now under a new name on Twitter to make it look like he's not there but he is so I just I need to stress to you guys that that is what is happening free oddity defended a pedophile kept him in the community and would have kept it secret for as long as he possibly could 
until it forcefully got leaked. Freyotity is not a good person. I mean, I just don't think that he needs to be in the community. So just, if you still use Entropy after this, I don't know what to tell you, you're a lost cause. I'm gonna be providing some context to this stuff. So do you know how- Okay. So now, I mean, this is a fairly long segment here. Yeah, th this is, uh, at, you know, half of the video is an interview. Now, I, I don't know if we specifically need to watch this whole interview portion right here, because a lot of this is discussing a lot of the info that's already been in here, right? Um, that's what this, I, I, I'll, let me let this play for a little bit so we could see um, the source that we did this interview wanted to remain completely anonymous so this was a recorded discord call um this person's voice was removed from the call and then it was kind of like you know transcripted and re-uploaded with um what's the wording i want to use like a like a bot voice or whatever like you know like one of the voices that would read off like a streamer's donations or something like that let, let me just let it play for a bit and you guys will see what i mean how old goheezy was in 2022 to my knowledge this guy was like for the entire time we knew him an adult because he's been driving a car he had parts of his dad's company he was an adult in his 20s even back in 2022 i think even if he was at the very least 18 or 19, he was still an adult. Yeah, oh, wow. So, so from when he was like 14, 13, all the way up to, God damn, dude, that's really gross. So, so this whole section right here, again, it is, is mostly just an interview. I, for, for this reaction I do, I don't know if it's entirely necessary, um, to, con like, to, look at through the whole info or the whole interview since this is mostly um just going over a lot of the information that's at the start right uh again th this is an anonymous source i uh, an anonymous source means the person is anonymous uh, the, there's not going to be discussing of who it is it's you will see that in journalism all the time i'm not going to pretend that i'm doing that but oni certainly did right like it, 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 you're not going to give up the source that is really gross. Okay. You know, the thing is, he can talk all he wants about some therapy, about some depressive episodes, because when he was a regular member and we didn't know much of his behavior, he gave us his number. We texted on iMessage because I don't know. We were all friends and a few creators and modders from Entropy and other servers had his number. From that day until he deviated, we had his contact. Following that, one of our guys got a notification on their phone, and I don't know if I told you about this, but it said that Goheezy had joined Telegram. And the first thing we saw was that his profile was lowly hentai. We were thinking that this guy didn't change at all, that he made all of these things up. Jesus fucking Christ. Yeah. So, so I have... Six so that that's the interview. Again, I'm going to link the video. I'm going to link the Google Doc, a lot of this... Uh, you know, specific info in the description, in the comment section. Uh, Oni does have a closing statement towards the end. Let me just go to that real quick uh, here. Now, I want to make it clear. I want Dokkan Entropy server to go. I want Dokkan Entropy's Discord server gone. You guys are not good enough to help protect the miners in your community. All really scummy people. And I just don't think you need to be in the Dokkan community whatsoever. So I want to see Dokkan Entropy's Discord server deleted. I never want to see you guys make another one. And I would like for you guys to fulfill your promise. If you are going to keep Dokkan Entropy up, go ahead and just make it website only. I don't want to see it through another Discord server ever again. And we will know. We will know. With that said, I hope all of this information was enough to convince you that Dokkan Entropy needs to go. Please don't support people who have hidden pedophiles away and are still working under the, uh, behind the scenes and have stopped like and have just interacted super inappropriately with miners. Miners are not safe in that Discord server. They never will be until Dokkan Entropy gets their heads out of their asses. But I'm tired of giving Dokkan Entropy second chances. Frankly, I am. Dokkan's community has canceled people for far less than anything Dokkan Entropy has done in this document. So just, just let it go. Just let it go. There are better servers out there. If you guys are going to use one, just let them go. So with that said, I will see you guys in the next one. Uh, come up, come to your own conclusions, but hopefully it's on the right side of history. 
So, there we go, guys. There is the full details um, of the entire investigation, everything that happened. Again, there is a Google Doc here that has a lot of info in here as well. Um, it, it's just a bad situation. It's very clear that Free Oddity, Goheezy, Cody, all these people can't be trusted, right? This whole situation went down last year, and a lot of this grimy, rat, like, terrible behavior has continued. So, there we go. There is, I guess, sort of the full investigation that Oni's done. Um, if there is a follow-up, I'll probably cover it after this. But, I mean, we'll, we'll see how things are going to go. There's a mountain of evidence. And just saying it's not true is not good enough. Receipts have to be brought, right? This video is filled with receipts, right? We have in here, it's very clear that this Project, that project Sparking... sparking. Is, is an eject plan, an escape plan for, you know, Cody and Free. It's very obvious. Everyone can see it right in front of our face. So just saying, like, no, it's not, is not good enough. You have to come with receipts. So I'll probably end it right there, guys. Um, this is what it looks like with Dokkan Entropy. Uh, I mean, I think that Dokkan Entropy needs to be eradicated. This guy, Free, needs to be out of here. It's uh, like it, this, all these people, all of this nonsense just continues to circle free oddity. So we'll see how things move in the future.